Hannu, could you explain to us this uh, this uh, challenge between this uh, the balance between um, sustainability, removing the uh, fossil fuel based plastics from uh, packaging, and um, at the same time maintaining food safety? W- what is it that's the challenge there? First of all, I think we have to give a recognition to plastic that it's a fantastic material in terms of uh, barrier properties and. It has been able to kind of uh, deliver properties that are maybe even too highly engineered. If I take as an example that I have here a paper cup and, uh, you know, this is a paper cup with some uh, plastic coatings and this is supposed to hold coffee uh, 24 hours. I would be actually happy to have it only lasting half an hour or two hours. So we we can ask the question that are actually the current products already over designed and if we want to get fast moving we may have to make some uh, or do some compromises in order first like i said reduce the 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 fossil barriers and then gradually replace them by mono mono material fiber-based barriers or other barriers that then disappear in the recycling process and they don't sort of leave uh, microplastics to the nature and uh, this is complicated uh, sort of a technology <coughs> driven challenge that we are solving. Uh, we do it now in, in a very tight partnership with customers like Tetra Pak and, and multiple sort of a external uh, uh, stakeholders who can bring us then the best technology and innovation. And um, I'd say it's a marathon, but it all starts from the recycling, then reducing the layers and finally then replacing the, the, the fossil barrier layers. So, Anki, from uh, Tetra Pak's, what's Tetra Pak's perspective uh, on the uh, the uh, recycling issue, sp- particularly when it comes to the innovation side of things? As Hannah was already describing, there are so many stakeholders in this that we are bringing together. So, uh, we have been obviously focusing on this for many years. Um, used beverage cartons um, have been have their own recycling stream, uh, and we are focusing on making this work, as Hannah was describing while at the same time making sure that in the future it will all be in one recycling stream. So these two efforts we have ongoing. Uh, If I come to the used beverage carton recycling stream, and that's also where the Stora Enso announcement is very important, we are trying to make sure we have the right geographic uh, coverage. But at the same time, we're also trying to make sure that these investments will be valuable in the future when we are making sure the uh, beverage cartons actually are made as close as possible to 100% of fiber. Um, So both things are taken into consideration. And we also will be able to use these uh, partnerships on the recycling of today's cartons to understand how our future structures actually are working in a recycling process. Are we good enough with what we're designing to make sure we can separate them well enough? Is the fiber yield good enough? Do we have too much water? Do we need to transport these somewhere else? Uh, what do we do with the residues? Do they have value in another recycling loop? Or do we need to do something different there? Um, uh, discussions like, does it help to have a biodegradable coating there? Um, uh, is it okay to have pigments from a thin metallization layer? What happens to them in, uh, in the process uh, in a recycling mill? All these questions we're working on, we are closely involved there also in this project is the respective equipment suppliers. So that's one important part of the ecosystem. But we're also working with other partners that might take the recycler that comes out of the polymers and aluminum that might still be in there and make sure that the uh, process they're using, for example, pyrolysis, uh, can deal with the aluminum particles that might still be in there. And um, we are digging in many, many different areas there to make sure we find the good solution and bring the right partners together.